I've got a little sticker here. It's a table and it has some values that I need to put on the side of a small industrial machine. Now you can see this is just a thin little piece of nothing. It's basically some kind of shiny paper. And this is a 50,000 thick piece of anodized aluminum that I want to put this table on. So this will be a lot more durable. It'll look a little bit nicer when it's on the machine and I don't want to have these made. So you can see it's just a common table. It's got a couple merged cells. It's got some text in the uh, columns. It's basically something you could pretty easily make in Excel. Um, I have a financial background more than I have a design background, definitely. And I'm not that familiar with making this kind of thing in Illustrator, but I did notice that somebody was making it very easily in Corel. And I took a stab at that. And let's see how that looks. It's very similar to Excel, so it's kind of nice. And maybe somebody would appreciate seeing how this is done. So let's jump into Corel and look at that. So first thing we do is we jump into Corel and then we can find the table tool right underneath the text tool on the left side of the screen here. And we can just draw a table and it'll pop up with some default rows and columns. What we're gonna do is change the number of rows and columns, but first let's resize the table. So our table is gonna be sized just underneath the size of this aluminum tab or aluminum plate. And it is 1.5 by three inches. So I'm gonna undersize that a little bit to 1.375 by 2.875. And we want a total of 12 rows and four columns. And it looks like we have to change our size again. Okay, so that looks like the rough start of a table. So what we're gonna do is drag this to the center. So then we have a table. And what we can do is basically double click to activate the table. And now we can just act on each cell. So if you recall, our little sticker has a merged uh, cell right over here. So all we have to do is drag to, to uh, highlight two cells at once, right click and say merge cells, just like you would in Excel. So pretty easy, right? I didn't find that feature in Illustrator. I don't know if it exists, maybe it does, but it looked like people were doing this in much clumsier ways, especially adding the text to each cell individually. In Corel, it seems that you can act on each uh, individual text element in each cell and you can center things within the cell, uh, vertically, horizontally, whatever you wanna do. Kind of a nice feature. So then let's add some of the text. So the top left, we have uh, some text. I'm gonna grab the text tool. So that activates the text box. We probably need to make it a little bit smaller. You can see on the left, I have this big text panel. I think I got that by going to window, toolbars, and I think I added text. And there's also a docker for text. So that has three different sections here, our character section, which is basically the font, and I think fill and color and size. And then you have a second section that's just paragraph. So we're gonna use this button here to center everything within each cell. And then lastly, we have a frame. So that's each one of these cells. Let's consider it a, let's consider it a frame. And what we're gonna do is choose this little button here to align each piece of text vertically within the cell. But we can do that all at once later. So right now we're just gonna add the text and I'm gonna change this to six point font so everything fits within the cell. So we'll click here and we'll type the letters A, W, G. That's our first section. Then we'll type the word section. Now I didn't resize that so I'll have to choose the pick tool. Activate the table, choose all the cells and let's see if I can make the entire thing six at once. I don't know if I can vertically align it when nothing's in the cells, but let's try it. And we'll also center align everything. We may have to apply those individually though. So this last cell is gonna say diameter. And right below that, we are going to say millimeters. To the right of that, we're gonna say, and notice I just have between cells. That's a nice feature of this, very similar to Excel. And this will be inch. And this one will say, millimeters squared and squared I believe is alt 0178 looks good and this we're going to combine these two so let's merge those cells that's roughly what we want so then I'm just gonna add a bunch of numbers here this will be 32 this will be 0 0.034 this will be 0 0.25 and this will be uh, 0 0.010 so this is gonna run all the way down on the left side. This is gonna be 32 all the way down to 14. And these are wire gauges and different uh, cross-sectional diameters and the actual uh, outside diameter of the conductor of a cable. So all I'm gonna do is fill out this entire table. I'm not gonna do that for the moment just because this is only demonstration purposes and you don't need to see me fill out a table because it's all the same as what we've just done. 
So I can make something bold and oh, let's notice that this didn't center align after I merged it. So I'm gonna vertically center this. I'll just select it and we'll go here and say center align. It looks like the rest of this did center align. So those are kind of nice features that are available in Corel. Now, if we took this out and we marked it as it sits, let's make sure our size is okay. 1.375 by, okay, it said 378, I'm not sure why. 2.875. Oh, because I have a lock. Ah. Simple things. Okay, so the section didn't quite show up, but that's all right. As long as the table's activated, we can just drag these columns, these lines, wherever we want. So that looks pretty good. So we'll be able to use that. That's fine. And if we exported this table as it sits into EasyCAD, remember that these are just vector lines. If we change the stroke weight of this table, it wouldn't be respected by EasyCAD because they're just vectors. It, doesn't, it won't be able to recognize any stroke weight or any fill that we add in our Illustrator program or Corel. So what I wanna do here to add a little bit of thickness to the line, not a lot, this would probably be okay to mark like this, but I do want the line to show up. So Corel has this option where you can click right here when the table's activated, you go up to this options menu and you can click on this box that says separated cell borders. So you can individually separate each cell and now you're gonna lose a little bit of space so we'll have to resize a little bit, but I'm just gonna put one thousandth of an inch. Oops. 0.001 and vertically we'll leave it the exact same. So that should be enough that we could hatch that once we bring it into EasyCAD. So that's fine, let's accept that. Let's pretend this whole thing is filled out and it's ready to go now. So our values look pretty good. Our table looks pretty good. Let's zoom in, we can sort of see that little space between the borders. And let's say, okay, we're done. Let's export that to EasyCAD. I'm gonna jump into this other tab right here because I already did this and the values are basically the same and the spacing between each line is the same. So what I'm gonna do to send this out to EasyCAD is export it and you can export it as a SVG scalable vector graphics file or an Adobe Illustrator file. I'm just gonna keep it in Illustrator format. So I'm gonna say file, export, and I'm going to choose AI. I'm gonna click export. And you notice you can choose your version of AI. I tend to choose three. It usually is the most compatible. Eight is all right also. So it says there's one issue, I'm gonna ignore that. Now, notice these two radio buttons here. I choose preserve curves and text by removing transparent effects, and this one is very important if you have text. So if you just choose text, it will not import to EasyCAD. If you choose curves, it will. So choose curves for the text. I would get the table, but not the text if I chose text. So simple enough if you get it right. We'll choose okay. And the reason I'm doing this and not just making the thing in Excel and saving it as a PDF is that there are a couple advantages of doing a uh, vector file as opposed to having a raster file. One, it should mark faster. Two, you should be able to scale it and not have any quality loss. And three, a prediction when you use your red light pointer so you'll be able to see the actual table and where the, every value shows up rather than just having a box, uh, you know, uh, sort of a uh, boundary line. So it looks like we're exported. Let's see if we can open EasyCAD. Okay, so now we're in EasyCAD, and what we're gonna do is import that vector file, and that's gonna be right on our desktop. We saved it as an Illustrator file, so it says AWG table. Just double click it, it'll come in. What we're gonna do is send that to the origin so we can see it. Let's resize it so we can actually see what it looks like. So you can see we have all of our text shown as outlines, and we have our table borders shown also as outlines. Pretty easy, right? So all we're gonna do now is click hatch. I'm not gonna worry about the values for the moment, but I think these are the ones I'm going to use to actually mark it. 0.075 for the line distance. I'm gonna use the bi-directional hatch. And I'm not gonna mark the contour, enable, cross hatch, that all looks fine. We'll say okay, and it looks like it showed up fine. Now it shows up a little fuzzy as you can see on these edges just because I'm not marking the contour, but it's gonna show up fine when we actually mark it, so don't worry too much about that. So let us go to our laser now and see how that looks. So this is our little piece of anodized aluminum. I've positioned it on the center of this little soap dish fixture, and I'm not going to take this off the table right now, so it's a little bit inconvenient, but I have to use this fixture in a couple minutes to mark some, some parts. So it's positioned here. Let's go to EasyCAD and look at what we've got. Our table is selected. We've got show contour turned off just so we can position it. If we light it up, that's pretty good. And we can turn the contour on just to see how everything shows up. And that looks okay. It's not going to be perfect, but that's fine. I'll position it later and actually use the guides when I'm marking this. This won't be a high volume table, a high volume part that I need to mark, but I may just use these guides to line it up. No, no need for a fixture. 
So let's mark it and see how it looks. We are at the default pen parameters and that we do not want. I'm gonna turn that off first, change the speed to let's say 750 power to 60%. Frequency will change to 25, that's negative 400 and I'm gonna set that to zero. Okay, now we can mark this thing. Let's go. And the larger these table borders are, the longer it's going to take to mark. You can see it's making some uh, passes on that little section. So we're done, let's take it off. And I think we have a winner there. That looks pretty good. So I like about a thousand separation between those cells. So I'm happy with that. And you can see that it's pretty easy to do that in Corel. I'm not sure if there's an easy way to do that in Illustrator. I didn't see an easy way and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, but it looked like it was much more design based where you had to sort of lay out the cells and then overlay the text all in one box and then stretch it out to fit over the cells and adjust the vertical spacing which is okay it's not that big a deal it's just if i ever have to go back and change this table it's really easy to do all the values are respected all the cells are respected the spacing around or within each cell is respected it just seemed like a maybe a better workflow so i hope this helps somebody i know it's kind of industrial based and a lot of people are doing this for more uh, design focused stuff you know marking on tumblers and firearms and that kind of thing but in case anybody ever does need to make a table this is how you do it so if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments thanks for watching